So we got a call for a schoolie that is stuck out here in the desert in the Hamlin Valley area. We're gonna head out here and see if we can get it out. It's a pretty remote area. We brought Trevor, that's why. That's right. And Lizzie's back, so she's gonna do the weather. It's a beautiful day. It's 68 degrees right now. It's gonna get hot, but it's gonna be a good day. Skeeter, what do you have to say about all that? I'm pretty excited. I've never been to this area out here before. Good it's to have our welder back. Well, you take for granted not having your welder around though, so she's back and that's good. It is. It's good to have Lizzie back. This is job number one since she's back from her week-long vacation. How was Omaha, Lizzie? It was very humid, very hot and humid. I saw fireflies for the first time. Some people call them lightning bugs. I also went to Dyersville, Iowa and saw where the Field of Dreams was filmed. That was cool. My family got to play a little baseball game on the field. Of dreams? Yeah, fill the dreams. Then we also went to a National Farm Toy Tractor Museum. You better have B-roll for this or they're never gonna listen to it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I do. You do? Uh -huh. Awesome. <laughs> no, that's enough. <laughs> Look at this breakfast right here. I sent them in there to get me some breakfast and they brought me back this lumberjack bowl. Tapatio on it. Thanks guys. You got it dude. So we are just leaving Enoch, Utah. Headed in the direction of the recovery. We are 50 miles from customer so the name of this highway that we're on is the lund highway so once again we're in blue steel traveling down this highway there's four of us we would fit in the morver why in the world are we not driving the morver why are we trailering it the answer is quite simple look how much room lizzie has back there yes. it's quiet it's comfortable and we have a backup plan if something goes wrong if we get the of air breaks down it won't break down but if it did we could still drive home tonight so this highway just turned to gravel so here's something interesting i wouldn't have ever guessed this if i wasn't in the towing industry but there is a lot of people driving around that don't know what a gravel road is. And don't jump all over them. It's not because they're of lower intelligence than you. It's because a lot of people are from very, they're from areas that are very removed from dirt and mud and, and uh, gravel. Like, I don't, I don't know. They just live in areas where everything's either asphalt pavement or concrete pavement. This comes up quite a bit because a lot of our roads start out with some sort of pavement on them and end up gravel, just like this road does. And so sometimes when I'm trying to find people, I'll be like, are you on the paved road or the gravel road? And they, and they can't tell me, because they're like, I don't know, I'm on some kind of, it's kind of like dirt, but it's not sand. I don't know what it is. It's crazy. What are you guys snickering about? Trevor, I need a witness. It sounds crazy, but it's true. But anyway, some of you may go, oh wow, I can't believe people don't know what a gravel road is. And some of you may go, that's what those roads are. Gravel road. Okay, so we're in Lund, and we're gonna cross the railroad tracks and head deeper into the wilderness. Look at that old house. You can tell it's old by the way it is. I'm thinking we should probably unload here pretty quick. All right, we have found our parking spot. We're gonna unload the Morver and then we're gonna just whistle on up the canyon. <laughs> All right, we got the air conditioning crank. And we've got a full load of dogs back there. I don't think you should take a school bus up this road. I agree. I would not be guessing there's a school bus up here. But I can see his tracks. This is where the school bus is. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's the crossing right there. Are you kidding me? He made it through there, but he yes. got stuck somewhere else. Let me take a look at this there. How in the world did he get past here? What? This is their digging utensil. <laughs> How in the world? They made it through this, but got stuck somewhere? <laughs>
So here's a little story about our dogs. Ed's in charge of feeding them, and we kind of let it get out of control. When Lady went to the vet, they said she's obese, and she's got pressure on all her organs, and it's not good for her hips. So they've been on diets, and we're trying to get them back in shape. So the last time we were up in this area, it was to rescue a Jeep Liberty that had rolled over. It was like completely upside down in a wash. We don't come up here that often, but when we do, it's usually something pretty serious. Except for that flat tire that nobody ever saw. Oh, <laughs> we did another job out here. There was a BMW with a flat tire. I'm going to show you that really quick because it never hit the air. Why don't we carry a spare tire, Ed? Too much weight. Goes on there. Let it back down, maybe. And it'll... What would work? Nice to meet you guys. What was it? Olden. Olden. Trevor, nice to meet you. I'm Matt. Hey, you're Matt. Olden. Awesome ride. All right. Yeah, we got a little stuck. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, precious. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah, they're all friendly. So, it looks like we don't have to be careful. Hey, we were gonna go out to the mine. Our GPS said it was only three miles to a solid road. I was like, all right, like we can make it three miles. We made it through that wash. We were like, three more miles, we'll get to that road, and we're heading to Eli. But failed. Yeah, I can't believe you made it through that wash and then got stuck here. <laughs> right? We literally got stuck on this tidy wash. It's because it's it perfectly caught that tire and that tire at yeah. the same time. <laughs> That's the only reason we got stuck. I would have made it no problem. What's the plan? We're just gonna tug it? We're gonna tug it. I don't have my front wheels where I want them at all. So just do a dead pull and see if I can get the front wheels to turn the direction. Then when I give you the thumbs up, then back up and do that pull I talked about. Like I'm in a Chevy Chase movie. We got a bumper problem on the back, you guys. Yeah? We gotta kind of remove some bumper because it's like flipping around 10 feet in each direction. <laughs> I'm hoping the back door opens. I don't know. Yeah? Back door's still good? I'll do that. He's good at that. Yeah, we've been here for three days, so <laughs> it's been a lot of digging. A lot of digging, a lot of crawling under, a lot of jacking up. Trying oh. to move a rock under it just to get a little more leverage. Yeah. All right, we're just ease on out of here. Yeah, and then yeah. Make sure you get through that bad spot. We'll just wait for you down there. So we're just easing on out of here. There's a really bad spot up here that I don't think they're gonna make it through. They said they spent two days digging to get out of it to come this way. And that was the good way for them to go through it. We've got to get them up through that. Then our work will be done. <laughs> we are back at the wash of no return. Yeah, this is gonna be... So there's a... Yeah. We got some more. Look out. Look out. Look out. Oh, see? <laughs> so so you, you need a bump cap. We 
got? There's lots of room under here from this side. <laughs> Lizzie, hand me that. Poke that down underneath. Perfect. I should have dug that out. I can't believe you made it through here the first time. That's the part that's got me confused. Ow. Honestly, Ow. I thought yeah, my front there. tires at first were gonna be able to get us up before the bumper started to drag. And that's the only reason why I even will was willing to make that try. Okay, let me give you the thumbs up, just kind of drive like you're pulling out into traffic, but you're not in a hurry. Woo! I haven't done very much pulling, but I love it. It's so much fun. That was awesome. So this is a quartz from China. That's awesome. Here you go. Oh, wow. Thank I, you. I, I was thinking little. That thing's huge. And then a pyrite cube from Spain for each of you. Oh, wow. Oh, Are you wow. serious? Yeah. Thanks, man. Bless. Thank you. Okay, Bless. there you go. Yeah, thank you so much. What size do you want? Large. Right on. Thank you, guys. Right on. Thank you so much. You Matt's off road recovery saved us today. They gave us some crystals. Thanks, guys. I say it's a Bless. fair trade. Okay, we'll just meet. We'll meet you down at the spring. Yeah. All right, we've just stopped here to take a little break and we've got this road right here that goes right up there we're gonna go see where it goes because we can see some mines right there we're gonna go check it out how far down does it go can you see yeah, yeah. Bottom. you can see the bottom it's like what 30 feet 20. see this ore right here man so they didn't always have the best um, recovery methods and processing methods in the past. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so that's what I was gonna say. If you ever wanna prospect, some of the best places is to go hit is the old mine tailings. Cause it's already dug out for you. So guys like Ed will go out here, clean house on this, cause they got crushers and processors and they can take it to people. Ed would love this, man. Mm -hmm. Well, if it ain't gold, he don't care. Oh really? He doesn't yeah. like silver or anything? Nope. He yeah, he'd pass up ten thousand dollars of silver if he could find fifty dollars of gold. So now we know what's up here, and we also know they never hit anything right here because there's no mine. There's just all these test holes. Let me let me let me clarify. They did find something. They just didn't find enough to make it worth their time to set up. The mother load is what they were missing. <laughs> now you're riding on Lizzie's lap. Oh. Mm -mm. <laughs> Nice. Continuous Thank breathing. You. Yeah, circle breathing. That's awesome. You want to try? I'll try it. Do you Let's know see. how to do it? Uh, if you I don't like trumpet, it, but it's different, right? Well, looser. 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 Okay, so like a tuba, but even looser. Close. <laughs> Get your lips sealed. Just see, <laughs> as long as you're sealed on it. Oh, you got a seal? <laughs> try it, Trevor. Your turn. He's like, I don't want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> I tried. It's harder than yeah, you Yeah, think. I'm, I'm with Trevor on this one. It's just more content. <laughs> all media is good media, right? You were a tuba right. player after all. Horselet. <laughs> That's close. Trumpet. <laughs> There's your trumpet. <laughs> what y'all doing in it's there? It's like you got a seal, but you got to stay loose. Mm -hmm. So Nailed it. Oh, That's it. Australia just called. <laughs> you almost had it. I can hear it. Thanks again, Matt's off road recovery. Trevor freaking nailed it. First time. Almost. Try. I think you gotta kinda hum when you do it. Oh. When I was watching him, I think you gotta, it's kinda like a kazoo. Like oh, and the cat's out of the bag. I used to play the tuba, but so did I. We played together because we were in the same grade and in the same band class. We both started out with trumpet and then they needed tuba players so we both moved moved to tuba. So we were super cool with trumpets so we thought you know what would be even cooler? <laughs> Gigantic trumpets. <laughs> Chicks would dig that. And boy didn't they. Okay well that job went pretty good. Those guys were super fun. 
So I still maintain that is no road for a school bus, even one converted into a motorhome. But we did get them out. It wasn't too big of a deal. We had some fun. We got some, some crystals out of the deal. What else happened? Oh, we got to look at some old mines, like some prospecting holes. But we are still a long ways away from home and we are hungry. So I'm thinking we're gonna, gonna take a little detour through Milford. So there's a chance, no matter how slight, that we're taking some unnecessary risks to get lunch. At least I've got the full support of my crew. If we get in a pinch, we can always send a telegraph. So not two seconds after Skeeter told us that he always wanted to hop a train, kind of live the hobo life for a minute, look what pops into view. Comment below if you think we should let Skeeter hop this train. So Skeeter passed up the opportunity to jump a train this time, but maybe next time. Gotta have some ketchup. Yeah. He's putting ketchup on it. I've got some delicious French toast and sausage. Mmm, breakfast for lunch. Boy, that was some good food. It was delicious. And now my belly's full and it's nap time. Lizzie doesn't need her belly full for nap time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I think that was a good day's work. We're going to head back. Thanks for watching.